A character who knows all too well how it feels like to be ridiculed for their appearance is Seijin Komamura. He is one of the more unique characters within Bleach, not only because of his appearance, but the way that he is. Throughout the course of the story, we learn a lot about Komamura through the relationships that he has with several different characters, in particular his friendship for Tozen and his respect and admiration that he has for Head Captain Yamamoto. Through these bonds that he has formed with these different characters, Komamura grows as a character, to the point where he no longer hides his appearance. He has a strong sense of duty and even loyalty to the head captain, due to the respect that he has for him. Outwardly, Komamura appears very aggressive and stoic, as well as appearing to be somebody that you wouldn't want to get on the bad side of. But in actuality, Komamura is very compassionate, and he has a great deal of consideration for his subordinates and his friends, and it is these qualities which make him very suited to being a captain of the Gotei 13. Due to his strong sense of duty, he is one of the more formidable captains within the Gotei 13, prepared to defend the honour of the Soul Society at a moment's notice. Komamura is true to his word and it is for this reason that he leads his life with morals and principles. It is because of these morals and principles that he questions Tozen when he betrays the Soul Society, but I'll speak more about this as I go into his character. But for now, let's delve deep into the history of Komamura's character, as well as going over the early appearances of his character within the Soul Society arc and what our first impressions of Komamura are. Komomura first appears in chapter 81 of the manga and in episode 24 of the anime. Aside from his large stature, the first thing that you will notice about his appearance is the way that he has concealed his face with a helmet. In a similar fashion, he conceals the rest of his body with various different shoulder pads or armour. We are not aware of this initially, but this is because he is ashamed of his appearance. It's either that or he isn't confident enough to show who he really is underneath the helmet. It is only after Tozen betrays the Soul Society that he actually removes his helmet. Despite his appearance, being very intimidating, he is very kind-hearted, and when it comes to the intentions of his character, they are the most pure out of all of the other captains. He doesn't mix his words or bite his tongue, he says how he feels in any given situation. What is right is right to Komamura, and what is wrong is just plainly wrong. This degree of decisiveness that he possesses makes him a ruthless combatant. It is like there are two sides to his character, one when he is interacting with others, and another when he begins fighting with someone, and in either occasion, it's all or nothing when it comes to Komamura's character. Either he is kind-hearted and he cares about you, or he is ruthless and he wants to defeat you. There are two instances which really affect Komamura's character and which shape his growth. The first of course being Kaname Tozen's betrayal and subsequent defection from the Soul Society, while the second is the death of the head captain within the Thousand Year Blood War arc. Both of these instances serve to push Komamura's character to places that he has never been before. These situations ultimately lead to Komamura making the ultimate sacrifice within the Thousand Year Blood War arc, and I'll speak more about this when I talk about his involvement during that arc. Komamura originates from a clan of werewolves, hence why he looks like a wolf with human characteristics. Not only is he the tallest captain of the Gotei 13, but his appearance also makes it difficult to miss him in a crowd of people. Because he stands out so much, because he looks so different to those around him, he decides to conceal himself, so that unnecessary attention isn't drawn towards him. You can tell that he has been ridiculed in the past for his appearance. Despite all of the hardship that he has gone through, he demonstrates his kind-hearted nature to those around him, like his subordinates within the division that he leads, or his friendship with Kaname Tozen, who is the only person who didn't judge him for his appearance, and decided to offer him support through a friendship that they formed with each other, as well as Head Captain Yamamoto, who he feels incredibly grateful for. The Head Captain had allowed Komomura to seek refuge within the Gotei 13, despite the fact that he wasn't a human. He gave Komomura a home to go to when everybody else rejected him, including his own people. We don't know much about Komomura's past, but let's go through all of the instances within the manga where his backstory is mentioned. In Chapter 500. 39, we learn some key pieces of information which reveal to us why Komomura had left his family when he was younger. In a conversation that Komomura has with his great-grandfather, we learn the reason behind why he had abandoned his family. He grew tired of his clan, choosing to live within the shadows. His great-grandfather explains that the werewolf clan has no business with meddling with the affairs of the outside world. No matter what happens or who decides to rule the world, they will continue to live within the shadows. Whereas Komomura desired to live freely, for the sake of their children and their grandchildren. He feels that their clan should not be feeling ashamed and hiding themselves from the world. As we know, initially when Komamura had abandoned his clan, he had been posing as a human by concealing his face under a helmet. He tells his great-grandfather that he stopped doing this because he learnt that the world was becoming more accepting of him. He believes that the world is changing and it is becoming more tolerant, and it is for this reason that he tries to persuade his great-grandfather here that his clan no longer needs to live within the shadows. If they only chose to, they could live freely, and they would not be ridiculed or made to feel 
feel ashamed of their appearance. This conversation that Komomura has with his great grandfather is very insightful. We get to learn about why Komomura had abandoned this clan and why his thoughts don't align with the thoughts of the other clan members. In particular, the elders, like his great grandfather, who prefers that their clan just mind their own business and don't get involved in the matters of the outside world. We also learn how Komomura was invited into the Gotei 13 in chapter 138. He tells his lieutenant in this chapter that he has a great deal of gratitude for the head captain, and he owes a debt to him. He describes how because of his appearance, he was shunned by the outside world. But head captain Yamamoto had accepted him and allowed him entry into the Gotei 13. And it is for this reason that Komomura is indebted to the kindness of the head captain, and he would go as far as to even sacrifice his own life for him. In chapter 176, we see the first time that Komomura and Tozen meet. Tozen apologizes for having bumped into him, but Komomura tells him that he is speaking in the wrong direction. This results in Tozen complimenting Komomura, stating that he has an exceptional ability to hide his presence. Of course, because Tozen is blind, his ability to sense the presence of others is heightened, but despite this, he didn't sense Komomura. This encounter was prior to Komomura joining the Gotei 13. From what we can gather from this encounter, we can see that Komomura was hiding himself and minding his own business. It became a force of habit for him to conceal his presence so that he wouldn't be bothered by others. It appears that he is actually surprised that somebody is actually speaking to him and treating him as an equal. And you can only know this through the subtlety of the expressions that Kubo draws in these panels, like the surprise in Komomura's eyes, or the anguish that is drawn into his eyes when he states that it is a force of habit for him to conceal his presence from others. Tozen and Komomura would meet again when they discover that both of them have joined the Gotei 13. We see the two of them stood at the grave of Tozen's friend who had passed away. He asks Komomura why is it that he became a Shinigami. Komomura affirms that his reason for joining the Gotei 13 is to repay a debt of gratitude to the person that had saved his life. Of course, we are well aware that the debt that he owes is to the head captain, a strong friendship formed between Komomura and Tozen, primarily because Tozen didn't treat him like an outcast, or didn't judge him based on his appearance. After all, how could he because he was blind himself? So a friendship formed between the two of them irrespective of this superficiality of outward appearance. During the Soul Society arc in chapter 138, Komomura solidifies his stance and states that he is against all of those who are seeking to sabotage the execution of Rukia. He has no doubts in the decisions made by the head captain and remains loyal to him. What is also quite notable in this chapter is that Tozen feels the same way as Komomura and even states that the two of them follow the same path, which happens to be the path of least bloodshed. Later, during the same chapter, Komomura, Tozen and their lieutenant stop Kimpachi and his men from assisting the intruders of the Soul Society. While their lieutenants decide to fight with each other, Tozen and Komomura begin their battle with Kimpachi, with Komomura being the first one to unsheath his Zanbakdo and immediately activate his Shikai. Tozen follows suit and activates his Shikai and attacks Kimpachi, but it appears that both of their attacks were ineffective against the maniacal captain. Komomura is surprised that Kimpachi had survived his Shikai attack. He has no idea how he is still able to stand. As their battle continues, Kimpachi taunts them to use their Bankai. Komomura refuses to show his Bankai to a traitor like Kimpachi, but instead Tozen uses his Bankai. Kai. Kimpachi ends up defeating Tozen, but Komomura interferes, preventing Kimpachi from killing his friend. He stops Kimpachi's attack by using his left arm and his helmet. This results in Komomura's helmet breaking into pieces, which reveals his true appearance. He asks why Kimpachi isn't surprised by the way he looks, but he tells him that looks count for very little in battle. It doesn't matter if you appear to look like a beast. The only thing that matters is if you can fight like a beast. In order to satisfy Kimpachi's lust for battle and to shut him up, Komomura activates his own bank. A giant figure appears behind Komomura and it seems to be copying his movements. It appears that the strength of this large being that he has summoned far exceeds his own. Through it, he is able to inflict large amounts of damage to his opponents. Because of its large size, you would assume that Komomura's Bankai is very slow, but in actual fact, it is anything but slow. This giant is able to mimic Komomura's movements instantaneously, meaning that despite its large size, it moves incredibly fast. His battle with Kimpachi is interrupted after he senses that Head Captain Yamamoto Moto has activated his Shikai. He leaves Kimpachi in order to rush to his aid. While rushing to Sokyoku Hill, he hears the message which reveals that Aizen and Tozen have betrayed the Soul Society. At the end of chapter 175, Komomura suddenly appears and attacks Aizen with his Shikai. Aizen effortlessly stops his attack with one hand. Komomura is furious that Aizen is so smug that he is grinning after he has betrayed and deceived everybody. He even states that Tozen will pay for his betrayal. He apologizes to his friend before activating his Bankai, but Aizen uses uses his complete hypnosis to get close to Komomura. He uses a level 90 Kido spell on Komomura, which easily defeats him, and this highlights the vast difference
difference in power between Komamura and Aizen. Both of them should be captain class, but they are unequal in strength. In chapter 178, when the defectors are leaving the Soul Society, Komamura demands Tozen to come back, questioning if he remembers the reason behind why he became a Shinigami. Wasn't it for the sake of his friend that had died? What happened to his desire to uphold justice? He demands to know where Tozen's sense of justice has gone. Tozen responds by saying that he follows the path which is least soaked in blood. He believes that justice will always be found following that path. And it is for this reason that Tozen believes that his actions are backed by the ideals of justice. After they leave, in chapter 180, we see Komamura stood at the grave of Tozen's late friend. He wonders what Tozen's friend would have said to him in order to stop him. He is then interrupted by Tozen's lieutenant, Hisagi. He asks if Tozen will ever come back, to which Komamura replies that he has no doubt that he will. He affirms to Hisagi that they will bring Tozen back, even if it's by force, in order to open his eyes to the false sense of justice that he appears to have adopted. He is deep deeply affected by the betrayal of Tozen, and it is for this reason that after the defectors leave the Soul Society, Komamura requests to be alone for a while. And like I mentioned earlier on in the video, Komamura decides to no longer wear a helmet after the betrayal of Tozen, finally showing his true appearance to the rest of the Soul Society. The next time that Komamura is really involved in this story is during the Fate Karakura Town arc, where he along with the other Gotei 13 captains arrive in Fate Karakura Town in order to stop Aizen, Gin, and Tozen. In chapter 326, he assists Ikaku, who appears to have been defeated by one of Baragon's Frashion. He manages to catch the Aranka Po off guard by punching him into the side of a building. The Aranka survives the attack and challenges Komomura. In terms of height and size, he is larger than the captain. He returns the favor by punching Komomura back, which sends him flying. The Aranka then releases his Zanpakuto, which results in him growing even larger in size. Komomura then reappears and prevents Po from attacking his lieutenant and Ikaku. He proves himself as a captain as he is able to manhandle and throw the oversized Aranka onto the ground. After this, Komomura reminds his lieutenant to never run away, which is what he was planning on doing after assuming that Komomura was defeated by the Aranka. When Po recovers, he attempts to fire a Sero, but the captain then unleashes his Bankai. And for the second time in the story, we get to see Komomura's Bankai in action. This time, we see how it effortlessly blocks the Aranka's Sero. Komomura then formally introduces himself to Po, as he states that he is Seijin Komomura, captain of the 7th division. In the anime, this portion of the battle is extended slightly, but in the manga, Komomura swiftly kills the Aranka with one strike. In chapter 328, Komomura's lieutenant Tetsu Zaimon reprimands Ikaku for not using his Bankai. The two lieutenants briefly argue with each other, but Tetsu Zaimon reminds Ikaku to put his duty before his pride. Ikaku doesn't want the others to know that he has learnt Bankai, so he tells Tetsu Zaimon not to tell his captain. But it appears that Komomura was standing behind his lieutenant the whole time, and if you remember, this is a subtle nod to Komomura's ability to conceal his presence. Of course, he had overheard the conversation between the two of them, and is well aware now that Ikaku has attained Bankai. But knowing that he wants to keep this a secret, he tells them not to worry, as he reassures Ikaku by saying that his hearing isn't as good today. He chooses to respect Ikaku's privacy and not to share the news that he has attained Bankai with others. This is an example of the compassion that Komomura has for his subordinates. His compassion is once more highlighted in chapter 364, where he decides to stay with the injured lieutenants protecting them. But Kira pleads with Komomura to go and protect the other Shinigami. His involvement in the battle against Aizen is essential in order to defeat him, and Kira knows this. This is why he tells him that it is no point in protecting the lieutenants if everybody else gets killed. After hearing this, Komomura decides to join the battle. The fateful reunion of Komomura and Tozen occurs in chapter 367, as Komomura protects Shinji from an attack from Tozen. Shinji is surprised that Komomura has decided to help him, as he describes himself as a oddball, but he notes that Komomura appears to be quite odd in appearance also. The captain affirms his reason for assisting the Vizard by stating that Shinji and the other Vizards didn't hesitate to attack the Menos Grande, and it is for that reason that he is assisting him, due to the fact that they have a common enemy before them. It is for this reason that he has decided to fight alongside Shinji, refusing to hear any objections that the Vizard may have. In response, Shinji describes Komomura as being rather rigid and stiff here, saying that he has a hard time dealing with such people. Regardless of this exchange, Komomura's eyesight appears to be fixated on Tozen, his former ally and friend. It appears that the rules have been reversed. In the past, Komomura had protected Tozen from Kimpachi's attack, but this time he is protecting somebody else from Tozen's attack. Komomura would never have guessed that he would have had to block Tozen Zanbakdo from attacking somebody. Tozen responds in a very cold manner, as he states that he knew that this day would come. In a very small panel, Kubo draws the expression that is seen through Komomura's eye, as you can see that he feels sadness after hearing Tozen's remark. It appears that the battle between Komomura and Tozen is about to begin, and it's going to be 
be a fight to the death. That is, until Tozen's former lieutenant Hisagi interrupts and requests permission from Komomura to also be allowed to join this fight. After seeing that Aizen has also joined the battle on the front line, Tozen is now compelled to face off against Komomura with his true power. He assumes that Tozen is speaking about Bankai, but he tells Komomura that he will not be relying on Bankai because Aizen has given him a power that is far greater than Bankai. Komomura's shocked expression leads him to wonder if Tozen has allowed himself to become holified. This angers Komomura as he yells that that Tozen has allowed himself to fall so far. Indeed, after the dust settles, Tozen appears with a hollow mask on his face. He then proceeds to cut down his former lieutenant Hisagi. Komomura then strikes Tozen from behind, but his attack is blocked. From this block, he feels the immense power that Tozen now possesses. He kicks Komomura to the ground and finds it funny that the Shinigami accept Ichigo as their comrade, despite the fact that he has the ability to holify also. Why is it that they have disdain for Tozen now that he has the same power? Komomura remarks that Ichigo had no choice in the matter. He didn't choose to become holified, whereas Tozen did. What bothers the others, and Komomura in particular, is that Tozen had strayed away from the righteous path. Despite the fact that he was a remarkable Shinigami, he abandoned all of this in the pursuit of his warped idea of justice, which led to him holifying himself, which Komomura describes as being depraved. Tozen questions whether if he is depraved for allowing himself to become holified. He remarks that Komomura is judging him on the basis that all hollows are bad and all Shinigami are good, but an emotional Komomura replies that he is depraved for having betrayed the Soul Society and all of his friends, all for the pursuit of more power. The allies of the defectors of the Soul Society Society were heavily impacted by their betrayal. You can see this through the sadness that Komomura feels and the confusion that Hisagi feels. Both of them have not been able to come to terms with the fact that Tozen has betrayed them. The fact of the matter is, Tozen had betrayed himself as somebody else to them, but in actuality he was somebody totally different. One of the key characteristics of Komomura is his unwavering loyalty. He had showed his loyalty for Tozen by protecting him and fighting alongside with him against Kimpachi during the Soul Society arc. He developed this loyalty after receiving acceptance and friendship from Tozen. After Tozen impales his former lieutenant and proves that he is beyond redemption, Komomura activates his Bankai. Tozen assumes that Komomura is underestimating his new abilities. Does he really think that his Bankai is enough to defeat the holified Tozen? They both charge towards each other and are successful at landing an attack. When Komomura strikes with his Bankai, the destruction is devastating, but I don't think he ever assumed somebody would survive an attack from his Bankai. Tozen's left arm is crushed by Komomura's Bankai, but despite this, he was still able to land an attack. Thanks to his holified abilities, Tozen is able to use super fast regeneration to heal his arm. Once more, Komomura's eyes are used to convey disappointment. He further affirms that Tozen is no longer a Shinigami after all. They have an exchange which leads to Komomura asking Tozen why did he become a Shinigami, to which Tozen reveals that he did so seeking revenge. He tells Komomura that didn't he find it strange that Tozen would join the same organization that murdered his dearest friend. He wonders how Komomura did not find this strange, but he tells him that he always always assumed that Tozen was fighting for justice. Komomura was well aware that Tozen's late friend had a great deal of passion for justice, and he felt that by joining the Soul Society, Tozen would follow in her footsteps and would honour her. It appears that Komomura had misunderstood Tozen's motive. His definition of justice differs from Komomura's. He doesn't believe that it is just for him to forgive the people who murdered his friend. While he admits it would be virtuous, but he doesn't believe that justice is found through virtue. Komomura didn't realise that Tozen didn't want to live in peace without avenging his friend. The peace that he found within the Soul Society and the friendships that he formed, he describes them as vices, things that were ultimately holding Tozen back from his goal of revenge. In a way, you could say that Komomura was also blinded by his ideal image of Tozen, this image that fit Komomura's definition of justice. You could say that he selfishly clung on to his friendship with Tozen, because he was one of the first people to look beyond Komomura's appearance and accept him for who he is. After Tozen reveals how he truly felt, Komomura admits that he misunderstood his motives. If Tozen was concealing these emotions, and this is how he truly felt, then they were destined to collide one day. Tozen questions whether if it is right for Komomura to kill him just because they don't see eye to eye. Is that his definition of justice? He answers by agreeing that this is indeed justice. He bluntly states that if they cannot find any common ground between their differing motives, then it is pointless trying to persuade Tozen. The only thing left
left for Komomoro to do is to honor the head captain by fulfilling his duty as a Shinigami. His motives and his ideals for justice have left Komomoro with no choice but to slay Tozen. He admits this regrettably and he says that it will not bring him any joy. Komomoro honorably states that he is glad that he learned about Tozen's true feelings before coming to this conclusion. Despite the pain that he felt and the other Shinigami after learning about Tozen's betrayal, he tells him that his heart has already forgiven him. And I feel like this moment perfectly embodies the character of Komomura, somebody who is righteous and unwavering. His loyalty to the Soul Society is not clouded by the fact that he has to now face off against a former friend. He finds closure from Tozen admitting how he truly felt. After learning that Tozen was seeking revenge against the Soul Society this entire time, Komomura strengthens his resolve. And you can see this through the determined look in his eyes. Sadly, he has no choice but to defeat his friend. In these videos, I always credit Kubo's art style, and I find it fascinating how he is able to give so much emotion to an anthropomorphic character. And it's not just surface level emotions like anger. Kubo is able to subtly convey how Komomura is feeling. If you pay attention to a lot of the paneling of the pages where Komomura is engaged in conversation, you can see that Kubo purposefully draws his eyes. And it's like I've been mentioning in this video, through his eyes we get to understand Komomura's emotions. From my perspective, paying attention to this detail helped me to appreciate his character a lot more. And this method of conveying emotion is not exclusive to Komomura alone. There are various different instances or characters within Bleach who convey emotions through the subtle expressions of their eyes. I feel like this is just one of Kubo's techniques and it works very effectively. If you're one of those people who are not very forthcoming with how you feel, but your emotions are always written on your face, then you may be able to resonate with the way that Kubo conveys emotions from his characters. And I love that it isn't spoon fed to you. It's very nuanced and you have to look for it. And this is precisely the reason why whenever I go back and look at old chapters of Bleach, I always pick up on subtle details that I missed on my first or second read through. So at the end of chapter 385, Tozen activates his Resurrection. Will Komomura still be able to forgive him after he witnesses his new transformation? After Tozen transforms, he is finally able to see. He marvels at the beauty of the world, but when he looks upon Komomura, he describes him as being uglier than he had imagined. Komomura is beyond disappointed by this insult. You can feel the hurt that he must be feeling. He recalls a earlier memory when he is accompanied by Tozen and visits the grave of his friend. He describes how his friend had loved the world. She had become a Shinigami in order to maintain peace and to uphold justice. Tozen had confided in Komomura that he didn't want her sense of justice to disappear, so he continued with her heart's desire. He makes it clear that he wanted to continue upholding justice for the sake of his friend. After recalling this memory, Komomura has an internal dialogue, as he notes that Tozen was hiding a lie within his words. He remembers that Tozen would continuously speak about the world that his friend had loved, but he never spoke about the world that Tozen himself had loved. This led Komomura to conclude that maybe it's because Tozen hates the world. In fact, it is understandable. After all, anyone who loses a loved one in the way that Tozen did would understandably feel the same way. Komomura was glad that Tozen didn't portray himself as a saint or a perfect person. Somebody who despite going through all of this hardship would lie to everybody and claim to still love the world. And it is for this reason that Komomura had decided to befriend Tozen. He wasn't pretending to love the world that took his friend away from him. Through this friendship, Komomura offered his wholehearted loyalty, resolving to embrace Tozen whenever he would feel sad. If Tozen were to feel joy, then he wanted to share in his happiness. If he were to go astray, then he would bring him back on the right path. If he made a mistake, Komomura resolved to forgive him. Even if the world had rejected him and he had nowhere to go, then Komomura resolved to be his refuge. The reason behind why he did this is one of the most revealing insights into Komomura's character. He formed a friendship with this man who could no longer love the world. He did so hoping that Tozen may learn to love the world again. Tozen easily defeats Komomura's Bankai. Just as he is about to deliver the final blow, he is striked by Hisagi from behind. After his defeat, Komomura shares his feelings with Tozen, telling him that he agreed with him that one day their swords would eventually clash. He describes that the friendship that they had prior to Tozen's betrayal was superficial, and it is for this reason that they were destined to fight one day, and this was so that they could truly get to know each other. Komomura has one request for Tozen. He doesn't want him to stop hating him or the Soul Society or to even put his grudge aside. He just requests that Tozen does not get consumed by his quest for revenge. He does not want Tozen to change the person that he is. Komomura admits that Tozen is irreplaceable and he would not want to lose him, the same way that Tozen's friend was irreplaceable to him. 
Komomura's very understanding words bring tears to Tozen's eyes, but he is enraged after Aizen decides to strike Tozen, effectively killing him. This angers Komomura as his feelings overwhelm him. He yells out Aizen's name and is about to strike him, until Ichigo joins the battle and charges towards Aizen from behind. Thankfully, Ichigo's appearance calms Komomura down, otherwise he would have irrationally charged towards Aizen and been taken out easily. When Aizen tries to shake Ichigo's resolve by taunting him, Komomura intervenes. He advises Ichigo not to let Aizen intimidate him, and this is hands down my favourite moment involving Komomura's character. It gave me chills the first time that I read it and it still gives me chills reading it now. He tells Ichigo that Aizen's taunts are his speciality. He advises him to remain focused otherwise it will cost him his life. He reassures Ichigo by telling him that he knows why the captains within Huekomundo sent him to fake Karakura Town. Of course, as we know, it's because Ichigo hasn't seen Aizen's Shikai. Komomura tells Ichigo that they will not allow this fact to change. Everybody, including the Vizards and the captains, will fight to protect Ichigo. We don't see much more of Komomura's character within the fake Karakura Town arc after chapter 390, since he is cut down by Aizen. But the next time that his character has a significant role within the story is during the Thousand Year Blood War arc. During the first Quincy invasion, Komomura faces off against Bambietta. He expresses his surprise that the Quincy army have recruited a little girl like her. She is equally surprised that the Soul Society have hired a wolf, adding that they must be low on numbers. In chapter 496, Komomura activates his Bankai, but it is stolen by the Sternritter. In chapter 505, Komomura senses that the head captain has joined the battlefield. This causes him to yell at his subordinates to stand back up, describing it to be shameful that they are lying on the ground while the head captain is fighting on his feet. After the Quincy leave, the Soul Society is in terrible shape. All of the captains are distraught, especially after learning about the head captain's death. During the aftermath, the captains gather in order to mourn the death of head captain Yamamoto. We learn that the head captain's body was never discovered. We can only assume that the Quincy's destroyed the remains of his body. When the captains are informed about the current critical condition of Kimpachi and Byakuya, Soifon breaks down. She steps out of line when she says that the other captains are calm because they resented the head captain. This leads Komomura to interrupt and tell her to stop. He questions her if she really thinks that she's the only person who wants to scream in this moment. Understandably, all of the captains are devastated, but they have to maintain their composure. Before the situation is escalated, Shunsui interrupts them, directing their attention towards the future and protection of the Soul Society, reminding them of the purpose of the Gote 13, which is to protect the Soul Society. In chapter 538, we see Komomura travel to a cave outside of the Serete. He is accompanied by his lieutenant. He leaves him stood outside of the gate while he walks inside. He is met by a large oversized wolf who he refers to as his great elder. After recognizing Komomura, he tells him that he has some nerve to return here. After being asked what he wants, Komomura reveals his intentions, stating that he wants to learn the secrets of his clan. We learn that this giant wolf is indeed Komomura's great grandfather. He laughs in Komomura's face after learning his true intentions. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that his great grandfather was disappointed that Komomura had been concealing himself, pretending to be a human. Of course, Komomura is no longer doing doing this, but his great-grandfather is not willing to forgive him. His great-grandfather doesn't want to assist the outside world. He isn't bothered if the leadership of the Soul Society changes from the Shinigami to the Quincy. It won't affect the way that they live their lives. The world will still continue to exist. Whoever wants to rule it doesn't make a difference to them since they live in the shadows. But Komomura doesn't agree with this stance. He wants freedom for his children and his grandchildren. The Great Elder threatens Komomura not to disturb the tranquility of their life. If he can't do this, then the Great Elder will crush Komomura himself. We see Komomura strengthen his resolve and engage in battle with the Great Elder. In chapter 556, we learn about the outcome of their battle. Komomura learns of their family secret. It is an ability called humanification. Komomura's werewolf clan were sent to hell for the sins that they had committed during their lifetime, but this punishment wasn't enough so they were returned to the Soul Society. The Great Elder reveals by temporarily severing the chain of sins that binds them, they gain tremendous power as the members of the werewolf clan return to their original forms before they receive the punishment of the beast. So this reveals that the werewolf clan were originally people, and they were transformed into this beastly form because of a punishment. To undergo humanification, the defeated Great Elder reveals that Komomura must offer his heart. He must tear out his heart with his own hands and to offer it to the Great Elder. Only under these circumstances will the Great Elder teach him this ability. Understandably, the thought of ripping out his heart causes Komomura to pause. The Great Elder assumes that he is not able to do it, stating that he has no obligation to throw his life away for the Shinigami. But Komomura states that he does. He reveals that he was unable to continue hiding, and for this reason he had abandoned his clan. The head captain had taken him in when nobody else was 
would. He owes head captain Yamamoto his life, and it is for this reason that he decides to avenge his death. Komomura clears up the shame that he felt from his clan. He offers up his heart to the great elder and learns the humanification ability. In this same chapter 556, he challenges Bambietta for a rematch. At this point in the story, he has already regained his Bankai. He appears to be wearing a new armor, which Bambietta immediately destroys so that she can see what he is hiding under it. After the dust settles, we are surprised to see Komomura in his human form. Bambietta is also shocked to see that he no longer has the face of a wolf. In this new form, Komomura immediately activates his Bankai. In the past, every other moment Komomura's Bankai was revealed, it was cladded in armor. But this Bankai transformation reveals what form was hiding underneath that armor. Bambietta is surprised that it isn't something that looks like a dog. Komomura reveals that this new form that his Bankai has taken exposes all of his spiritual pressure. It cannot be defeated by Bambietta's tricks. Bambietta had assumed that she knows the secrets of Komomura's Bankai after having stolen it. But because Komomura had offered up his heart, his Bankai was undressed of its life, and it is for that reason that Bambietta cannot use her ability to fire her spiritual pressure at it and turn it into bombs. Komomura's body has now become a shell. It is merely a vessel. As we see a close-up of his chest, there is a hole where his heart should be. We learn that this transformation into a human is temporary. While he is in this human form, he cannot die. It appears that Komomura had sacrificed his life in order to defeat Bambietta, but he didn't throw his life away. As he states, there is no reason for him to not put his life on the line. When the head captain had done exactly the same for his subordinates. In order to honor the head captain, Komomura sacrificed his life. In his final act, he ultimately proves his loyalty. In chapter 558, we see the great elder comment on Komomura, stating that he has proven himself and he really is a member of their clan. In this moment, the great elder feels incredibly proud of Komomura. After Bambietta is defeated, Komomura's Bankai begins to dissipate. He is clinging onto his life as he resolves to defeat Yuhabak. And this is where the subtlety and the genius of Kubo's writing is employed. In his final moments, Komomura is reminded of the emotion that he is feeling right now. What he is feeling right now is revenge. It is precisely what he told Tozen not to do. If you remember, he told Tozen not to throw his life away for the sake of revenge. The Great Elder states that revenge is the true form of their clan. The sin that their clan had committed was for revenge, and it is for this reason that they were punished and turned into wolves. By taking part in humanification, Komomura has returned to his clan. His life as a human has ended. This is the price that he must pay. He is transformed into a beast of revenge. The Great Elder condemns him to be furious, to curse himself, to live with his desire for revenge until his very final moments. He effectively sought his soul for revenge. If only he had taken his own advice, if only he had listened to the words that he had said to Tozen, he now takes the form of a wolf as a consequence of using the humanification technique. Through this revelation, we learn that the werewolf clan that Komomura belongs to was born from revenge. The sacrifice of offering up his blood and his heart onto a plate for the Great Elder will result in him living longer. This will prolong his life while he is sipping on the blood of resentment and revenge. The animal that Komomura transforms into is picked up by his lieutenant, as he reassures his captain that he has done nothing wrong. He tells him that they will continue fighting until they have defeated Yuhabak, for the head captain's sake. In this new form, Kubo draws a final shot of Komomura's eye here. To me, they give off a feeling of emptiness or concern. The final time that we see Komomura in the story is within chapter 612. Ura Hara had tried to summon all of the captains and lieutenants in order to go to the Soul King's palace, but Komomura and his lieutenant had declined. The reason for this being Komomura's injuries. They had also declined any medical help. Maybe it's because Komomura didn't want the other Shinigami to see him in this new form. At the point of making this video, I've not read the Can't Feel Your Own World light novels, so I don't know what the outcome for Komomura's character ultimately is. Is he still able to speak in this new form, or has he just transformed into an ordinary wolf? During these final chapters where Komomura appears, and we learn about the secrets of his clan, we can draw a contrast to Yoriichi. She is able to freely transform into a cat and back into a human as many times as she wants, but Komomura only had one opportunity to transform into a human before he was permanently transformed into a wolf. The theme of revenge is perfectly introduced into his character through the betrayal of Tozen, and then everything comes full circle as Komomura falls for revenge in his final act. After making this video, I have concluded that Komomura was not only unique because of his memorable appearance, but he also also had a lot of character qualities which made him very admirable. 
Despite everything that Tozen had done, he was quick to forgive him. In his final moments, he accepted Tozen for the person that he was, despite him having resentment for the Soul Society, which Komamura has a lot of loyalty towards. It was really enjoyable to study and analyze this character and all of his appearances within the story. The perfect way to wrap up this video is to tell you about Kubo's description of Komamura from the official Bleach character data book called Souls. He described Komamura in a short phrase, unshakable, stable loyalty, and I think this perfectly sums up who Komamura is. If you want to learn more about Komamura's friendship with Tozen and to see it from Tozen's perspective, then definitely go and check out my Tozen character analysis video. Now, like I do with all of these videos, I want to hand over the discussion to you guys. I personally love Komamura a lot, and if you don't like him, then I don't think we can get along. What are your thoughts on his character? Did you enjoy this video and learn something that you didn't know about him? Or are there things that I missed out and forgot to mention? Be sure to leave a comment and let me know your thoughts on this character. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, then please consider supporting my channel on Patreon. I have multiple tiers with the rewards including access to an exclusive Discord server, video scripts, as well as being the first to know about unreleased upcoming videos. Thank you for your time and whatever you choose to contribute, I will appreciate and it will mean a lot to me.